So forgive me for the overdub, but the noise in the garage was extensive, so I'm going to have to do it this way. Here we are looking at the wheel hub. The wheel hub is actually what goes onto the spindle. If you're wondering what a spindle is, uh, if you watch the video in the, the fast motion or time lapse, the spindle is that big silver proboscis uh, sticking out from the steering assembly. Now, right here is one of the two bearings that go inside this wheel hub. And the primary purpose of these bearings, these two bearings in this hub, is only to allow the wheel to spin freely. There is no actual transfer of power occurring to these components as they sit now. All of the splines that we need to use to transfer power for four-wheel drive are actually in the other components, specifically the hub and the hub shaft. Now these two bearings press into each side of this hub assembly. There is then a ring which allows us to index onto the spindle. And then there is a lock nut that is going to allow us to basically tighten that hub onto the truck. The key here is it's very important that you pay attention to the torque that is on this nut. If the nut is too loose, then the uh, hub will actually want to wobble or make noise on the spindle. It'll move in and out, move up and down, and you'll never get your, your brakes won't ever be right, your alignment won't ever be right, nothing will ever work right. But if I take that nut and I torque it down way too tight, then what I do is I squeeze those bearings against the races here, and that's what I'm touching, those are, those are races. And by putting too much pressure on it, the friction is increased with rotation, you create heat, you create wear, and you can actually lock up the components. So you want to make sure it's torqued down correctly. Now when we look at this lock nut, we then have a, a locking ring and a second nut. Obviously we have lubricated components. This is going on over a shaft, it's threaded, and then we place this ring on. But with lubricated components, trying to keep tension on the nut is incredibly difficult. So what we do is we place this lock ring between these two sets of nuts. And when we place it on and we get the torque down to where we want, we actually take a, um, any blunt object that'll fit and we bend the side of that ring over the nut. Because that ring is indexed on the spindle by this little pokey bit here coming out, it won't turn. And if there's a corner bent over the nuts, then they can't turn. So that ring is very important. It is what keeps the proper torque on the assembly after we've put it back together. Here we have a standard snap ring. And now we're actually seeing the hub. This is where the proverbial magic happens. The hub is the part that the dial bolts into, and here I am holding what's called a hub shaft. That hub shaft is what goes onto the splines that are running through the constant velocity joint off the front differential. This is where power is transferred to the assembly. So when we bolt this all together, the only thing making contact with that constant velocity joint coming from your front differential is that small um, hub shaft. And that hub shaft has sets of teeth, uh, those splines on the inside where it makes contact and on the outside. That outside set is very important because that's what's going to allow us to transfer power using our dial. Pause for intermission. I'm waiting on myself. This is weird. Okay, now this is our dial, and this is your standard worn locker. And you're going to see me fight this because it's been clean, but it hasn't been lubricated yet. When you have really rough hub dials like this, it's usually because grit has gotten into them or the grease is basically beyond its serviceable life. And so they get really hard to turn. So if you're experiencing an issue where you can't get the truck out of four wheel drive or you can't get it in, this is probably the part that needs to be serviced. You're trying to turn a dial that has very tight tolerances to keep the grease in. So if anything's in there, little grains of dirt, whatever, it's going to cause you an issue. Now what I'm doing is I am turning the dial counterclockwise to the freewheel or unlocked position. And here you'll see these teeth. We have teeth on the inside and the outside, these splines. The teeth on the outside indexed the hub. That's the 
large silver part there that I'm placing the hub shaft into. And they don't normally do anything. If, if four wheel drive isn't engaged, even though that interior uh, hub spline might be spinning because you have four wheel drive engaged but you're not locked, it just free spins. And when we're in the unlocked position, it's keeping that assembly that I'm inserting now it's actually keeping it away from that rotating hub shaft. So even though the component is in there, it's not touching that rotating hub shaft. Because what we do essentially when we turn it to the unlocked position is we pull it away from that hub shaft. And here I'm basically describing the same thing. Bear with me. So basically, unlocked, it can't touch the interior hub shaft, which means even if you engage four wheel drive, you will not transfer power to those front tires. Now, if I take this and I rotate it to the locked position, what you're going to notice about that spline set is that it starts moving. And if it were mounted, it would actually be moving inward inside the hub. So what we're doing when we rotate lock is we take this ring which is actually indexed in the hub and that interior spline set will go over the outside of that hub shaft. Remember the hub shaft is the only part that spins. So when we turn that dial clockwise we move that assembly inwards it touches this hub shaft and can then transmit power to the hub just like this. So it's a very simple set. There's a lot of components to it, but it's actually very simple. Now you'll notice these four springs and it makes it seem like, wow, that can't be very strong. The springs actually serve a very important purpose. The springs allow you to place the hub in a locked position without being perfectly aligned with the hub shaft. As you can see here, if you're not perfectly aligned, it won't go on. And if we didn't have those springs, you would actually have to have your tire perfectly aligned in order to engage it. What these springs allow you to do is rotate it to lock and then gently move the truck forward and then it will actually lock into position. That's another reason why in four-wheel drives they say when you come out of four-wheel drive and unlock your hub you move backwards and forwards because now when I turn it to unlock those springs are actually pulling that away from the hub shaft and if you've been doing hard off-roading it might get stuck and so you want to rock back and forth a couple times and allow it to basically retract from it under that spring pressure. Here you see the, the teeth of the screw assembly, which is what moves this in and out. We want to avoid dirt, we want to avoid dust, things like that. And of course we want to make sure that everything here is well lubricated. Now depending on the four-wheel drive or locker system you have, these components could be different. But what's important is these are manual hubs. When we talk about things like air lockers or even um, hydraulic lockers, what am I thinking, uh, the, the quadradrac system, um, I'm having trouble coming up with the word, where you're either using pneumatic or hydraulic pressure to engage them, that's different because you're relying on something else to put pressure against those splines. In this instance, it is manual um, pressure that you are using to engage the splines. And that is how your four-wheel drive hub works.